Well, thank you. This has been a very enriching experience. I especially thank my guest professor, Professor Najibaglo, Professor Nasser, and Professor David Roxburg for all the help they gave me during this year. And hopefully, we'll continue <laughs> until I finish. Uh, since the work of art is shaped by elements, the, art, the artist experience in his environment, such as education, geography, and the social, political, and economic console, oh, again with the English pronunciation. <laughs> uh, all these factors are determined to affect the quality of our artistic project and the aesthetic value. The theories dealing with the causes of the birth of civilization have differed in defining the key factor in influencing culture and art, some of which are attributed to environmental reasons, trade-related aspects, economic situation, religion, migrations, or wars. But still, it is established that these factors have a clear role in the change of the culture evaluation of societies. Therefore, I will try to review the status of arts in Saudi Arabia to identify the extent to which religion or Islam as the main factor influence its culture and art. So, I be so to begin, I will try to answer the question, what has Islam to do with art in Saudi Arabia? There is a simple answer and there is a complicated one. The simple one is everything. The not, so com the not so simple one is what I will try to do in less than 40 minutes, also an attempt to try to cover the following. First, a brief on Saudi Arabia, then a brief history of the development of fi uh, modern fine arts in Saudi Arabia. Third, Islam as a main topic, subject, or style, and then how Islam, I will try to show how Islam affected art by four examples. First, Muhammad al Salim, an artist from Najd, Salafi or Wahhabi culture, Abdul Halim Radawi from Hijaz, an urban, relatively sophisticated society, then uh, uh, by showing women's art, and last, Shiite art from Qatif, Saudi Arabia, subjects and trends. But I will try to show the art so you can conclude more than I would talk you into uh, the conclusion. Before I begin, <clears throat> I'm going to talk or uh, show you the the artwork. It's uh, a photograph by a well-known photographer Manal al-Dwiyan. I think it's the most artwork that shows how or it shows how Saudi is the the flag, the accessories and the way they use women used to cover their their faces before as sahwa uh, or uh, the uh, the new uh, religion way practiced in Saudi Arabia. They wouldn't cover it totally with black. It's just like something that you, they can be seen. Uh, also, I would like to begin with some facts and essential information about Saudi Arabia to those who don't know much about it. Well, for those, <clears throat> uh, first, it is the birth, birthplace of Islam and it is the guardian of the two of its holiest mosques. Although the royal family and law practiced is Sunni, Hanbali, Saudi Arabia has minorities of Sunni, Shafi'is, Hanafis, Malikis, and Shiites, Ismailis, and Ethni Asharites, or Twelvers, where most of them live in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. The second fact is that it is the third largest country in the Arab world and dominates the Arabian Peninsula. Its global importance comes from oil. It is the middle of the Middle East with all the political issues within the surrounding area, as most of us have heard in the past weeks or months. The Arabian Peninsula has its reputation of being the cradle of civilization and home to some of the earliest people who traded with and through the region. Then after Islam, the Hajj route continued to connect the region with the world. As you can see, the red lines are the ancient or pre-Islamic uh, trade routes, and the green ones are the Hajj routes. Najd was a tribal society in the middle, here, this is Najd, in the middle of Saudi Arabia, where the royal family comes from. It has, been, it has not been colonized, nor been under the Uthman Empire rule. 
uh, as you see from the map, the Ottoman rule was in Hijaz, part of Al-Hassa or the eastern province, but not in the middle. <clears throat> Al-Hijaz, on the other hand, was an urban, relatively sophisticated society. So when Ibn Saud conquered the region, there was a huge difference between the Najd and the Hijaz, culturally, socio-economically, and even politically. So we conclude from this brief, we can see that it is a perfect combination, religion, economy, and politics, a great recipe for the arts to emerge. And the law practiced is from the theology that comes from an isolated, isolated desert with limited interactions with others. Therefore, we will see how Islam is the main influence and obstacle in a way at the same time. <clears throat> Important dates. Uh, I will talk about a brief history of the development of modern art in Saudi Arabia while, sh while showing these dates. With the ideology that came from the call of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, known as Sheikh al Islam, from 1703 to 1792, who believed that those who practice innovation in Islam are kuffar, meaning infidels, Muslims in the peninsula were brought up to more restricted manner. This is especially a, a direct result to the position and the background that Abdul Wahhab held. Wahhabiyah or Wahhabism, the later name of this religious political movement, had a significant impact on the Saudi state. Prince Mohammed bin Saud, who founded the first Saudi state in 1726, responded to this religious political movement and had an agreement with Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Wahhab to help spread the call from Dir'iyya, where he was located, to all regions of the kingdom. The second Saudi state followed the Wahhabi call, and then, finally, when King Abdul Aziz established the third Saudi state, he followed the same approach and ruled under the Islamic law where the kingdom's population are Muslims, and Islamic law is applied by the state. Like any other culture, religion, and beliefs shape people's conceptions and ideologies in many ways. In this case of Arabia, the community has always been against art as a method of expression, especially through painting and sculpture. This is due to the belief that visual and performing art is in embodimented, which is strictly prohibited under what has been interpreted of the Prophet's saying. On the other hand, there is no clear evidence in the Quran to support that. I believe this has caused a delay in the country compared to other Gulf states in the actual practice of visual arts, especially in the Najd region, since it is the most fundamental and uh, strength of all regions. Uh, just to cover the dates, uh, or to explain some of the facts. Uh, at the beginning, the word fen, which is art, was extremely banned. It's a, something that kuffar does. We don't use it. Uh, that changed, like other aspects change in Saudi Arabia. Teaching girls was banned, but then it was approved. Uh, it's rethinking uh, or changing the way uh, things are applied. Even dealing with banks, it was uh, banned before because it was riba and haram. Then things changed because the need, the economic need. So that's what will happen, I think, eventually in the near future with art because of the economic and other needs. Uh, another thing, this is, a, a, I, well, this is my own opinion. Uh, People from the desert are not used to figures. So this is their own interpretation to uh, the sayings. That's why we can see figures for in other nations or in other Islamic art, not in uh, Saudi Arabia. So before I move, I want to list some important, yeah, these are the dates. Uh, when King Abdul Aziz first regain, regained uh, his state in Najd, and teaching drawing for the first time was canceled because of its name. But when the first um, uh, students went to Egypt, they found that they didn't have any kind of skills, artistic skills. I'm talking about students of architecture and medicine. So they changed um, uh, 
the changed the way they teach art in school. It was only calligraphy, and they changed the name to decoration, but at last, they changed it to art education. Even an academy for art was banned because things that were related to it. We had only art education departments in universities, but in 2010, we have the first College of Art and Design, but it's only for females. So this is also, I think, uh, a, a, a traditional thing that Arabs uh, th thought that arts and crafts were done by slaves. That's why they didn't want their children to go and study art. They think it's beyond them. And then for women, it's OK to study art because they're going to sit in the house. They're going to decorate it. So it's OK for them. So before modernization, I'll try to explain more. The only form of art was poetry, architecture, and handcrafts. But poetry was a well expected and practiced by nobility. And poets would have respect for their achievements. On the other hand, crafts within the Arabs since ancient times and before Islam was only practiced by slaves. And although the prophet encouraged handwork, uh, this was among the tradition Arabs never, this was something that tradition Arabs never left. <coughs> Not to note religious advider, advisors for the king forbid teaching art as they did in the matter of opening formal schools for women in the 60s. So the ban was for the word art, as I mentioned. Saudi Arabia still remains under the influence and the form and the context of culture, including visual arts. There has been a realization that art in the modern form did not fall within the local culture until the 50s of the last century. We can imagine its development in the past 50 years. Before that, the country was having a cultural uh, isolation especially in the field of art, which made handcrafts the only artistic outlet of people of, the, of this region. So going back when first undergraduate students, as again, sent to Egypt to study, they failed to show artistic skills. That changed, uh, that changed schools. And calligraphy, as I said, was encouraged in and out of school due to its importance in writing the Quran. But the artistic need made some gifted student practice and even show their early artwork later the need for art teachers made the government send saudis to studies to study art in the 60s males only then in 1965 the first art education institute was open in riyadh to graduate teachers males only again but art was finally practi practiced and recognized in society around 1975 we had institutes, exhibits, and art education department. Uh, then in the 80s, an open air art gallery was established in Jidda Cornish. Sculpture, sculptures included work by a variety of artists such as Henry Moore and Victor Vasarely. Lately, an art and design faculty is newly open for females only. And no, please note that we don't have a modern art museum, figurative art, is avoided in teaching and showing nude art is strictly banned. From all culture aspects, Islamic faith, faith and its symbols are the most influencing factor affecting the production of Saudi artists. It is believed that Saudi Arabia, the ma that Muslim artists in the past, this is the belief that we're taught, uh, have drawn away from drawing hu human figures or even attempting realism towards abstract art do that disagreement uh, on its norm, which is still a case today. And I, this is something that I learned after I came here. I wouldn't imagine Islamic art the way I know it now. So I'm writing several columns in Al Jazeera and other publications about the new Islamic art as it should be. So we find a number of Saudi artists avoiding the portrayal of humans or animals. Others turn to abstraction in whole or in part or are con uh, connected to draw uh, or portray only part of the human or animal body such as the face, head or side. The remaining percentage that permit this type of art say that it's con uh, compatible with religion or morali mor morality. 
This moves to showing the art. I'm going to try to show you the art and talk. The main subjects in art is Islam. Some subjects or some artworks are direct, like scenes from Hajj, from here in a classical way. Uh, another impressionism style, again, dealing with some of the Hajj uh, rituals. <coughs> or elements, this is an artist, Fuad Mugharb al from Al Medina. Al Medina is very, very well known, just like uh, the Vatican with the, the doves everywhere. So, or is any Islamic architecture in a, any way, these are from the early artworks in Saudi Arabia. Uh, again, reading the Quran, the halaqat, as they call them, where people uh, gather to read Quran or teach Quran. That was, for a time, the only way to, for schools or to teach in Saudi Arabia. Using calligraphy in a traditional way, as we can see here, using a traditional rug or abstract in the background with ha, harf al ha. Again, although there's figures, abstract figures here, you can see the, the elements from mosques. These are more modern, again, with the Kaaba as an element, with people, but abstract. Again, uh, mosques or uh, patterns from Islamic culture, the Kaaba again, but in a more modern way. This is more recent. This is in the early 2000s. This is a, a, a more recent this uh, artwork, a conceptual artwork by Ahmed Matar, where he put, calls it magnet, but I think he refers to it as the Kaaba. Uh, this is Abdul Nasser Gharim. He used, you know the rubber that they use on stamps? He has a whole series uh, saying that we Saudis or Arabs are very bureaucratic, bureaucratic. So stamps, we have stamps on everything, our birth certificates, everything in our lives relies on stamps. So he uses these rubber stamps as the background and then talks about issues, Islamic, uh, politics. Here you can see Islam and politics and no tears after today. This is a slogan he uses, uh, uh, talking about the American um, uh, uh, attitude towards Iraq and the politics. So no tears after today. This is another work. It's a video art by Abdel Nasser Gharim. Uh, Asirat, people who know Islam know what Asirat means the destination, I think, in, 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 in English. There was a bridge in Abha, where Abdel Nasser comes from, from the south. And there was lots of rain, and there was a flood coming. So people believed in that bridge that it will, they will, uh, that will, uh, uh, they will be safe if they go there, because it's concrete. They believed in concrete. So they went with their cattle to this bridge, but the flood destroyed it and many people died with their cattle because of that. So he's trying to say how people believe in such things. It's always the beliefs. It's a video art. I hope I can bring it in the exhibition I'm going to do in the summer to show the video here. Uh, this is another a very recent also uh, piece. Uh, it's uh, in transit uh, or terminal. He showed some of it in Art Dubai in this March. <coughs> he uses Islamic uh, patterns. Then another thing that people would think, okay, then Saudi people won't use poetry or don't have figurative art at all. This is not the case. They do. It's not taught. So people who want to draw or don't believe of, uh, it's pro pro forbidden go to study elsewhere or have people come to teach them in, in, in their cities. Uh, uh, Aziz Lia is an artist who studied in Italy. Okay. Okay, sorry. No. Okay, so 
Aziz Dia was one of the people who studied in Italy, and he's from the eastern province, from Jidda. Uh, sorry, western province, from Jidda. Hala uh, bint Khalid had an American classical uh, art teacher, teacher at house. She's, she's from the royal family. Badriya uh, Al Saud, no, a Swedi, sorry. She's from Qatif, a Shia, and this is another issue I'm going to come to it later on. And also Malika Al Sayyid, our Sayyid, yes, uh, for also from Qatif. So there is figurative art in Saudi Arabia, but you can see where they come from. It depends on their background and where they studied. <clears throat> Again, some would want to draw figures, but instead of drawing the whole figure, they would cover them, like Radia Burqawi. She would cover them with sheets. Or they would use other in sculpture, like calligraphy. Here is the ha, harf al ha. Or they would use, ab uh, they would do abstract sculpture. It, it, it's very rare when you find figurative sculpture in Saudi Arabia. You would find paintings, paintings but not sculpture. Uh, this is another kind of sculpture. And again, uh, I, I don't know why they don't think it's idols. I mean, to me, it's similar to the ways idols were before Islam. And this is another kind of sculpture by Faisal al Samra. This is more modern. Faisal studied and lived in Paris, so you can see the Western impact on his work. Uh, this is also very interesting. Huda Shahri is a young artist. When she talked about her artwork, she said, when I first did it, I put heads, but abstract heads. I thought, OK, I'm going to do it, but with no details. Then people were talking about her artwork while she's working, so she cut the heads off. And this is how it came through. So it's, it's just to show that how people, in a way, are afraid of people, other people, more than they are afraid of Allah. <laughs> it's, it's true in many aspects in Saudi Arabia, unfortunately. Uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, Muhammad Salim, another artist, and show how religion our traditional way of seeing Islam has affected his art. Muhammad Salim is from Najd, born in 1938 and died in 1997. Uh, at first, this is one of his drawings before he traveled. He studied and died in Italy. He's a pioneer, uh, influenced by Ital Italian artistic styles. But as I said, this is before he traveled. He was one of the first to travel. Uh, this is, I think, before he traveled, no date. But th this artwork was while he was in Italy. He, uh, he was uh, uh, influenced by Italian artists and uh, modern art uh, schools. Uh, but as you can see here, he was using figurative art when he was in Italy. Here you can see it again and again. He's is using a Saudi subject, uh, but in trying to do modern artwork. Again, this is a scene from Najd, his hometown. And then, after he came back to Saudi Arabia, he wanted to do something more Saudi. He wanted a style that comes from his own thoughts, his own culture. Uh, it was abstract. He did not use figures at that time. I don't know if it's his own belief that figures were prohibited or he didn't want to, or just so that others can appreciate his art and buy it. Uh, but uh, as Henry Moore once said, sometimes when you're uh, stopped or affected, you innovate and do something creative. And this is the, the, the thing that happened with Muhammad Salim. His style is very creative. 
uh, it comes from the desert. He always puts the composition inside and then he says the horizon is the most important element from the desert or art from the desert. And it's shown also the colors he uses uh, come from his culture. And you can see this is a tent, it's calligraphy. This is the structure that was happening in Saudi Arabia when he came back from Italy. Uh, we were having the same thing that we are having today. Money was, the oil prices were high, money was everywhere, and we were moving from a very traditional old mud houses to a new concrete city. So building uh, cranes were everywhere. And again, even here, there are figures, but they're very, very abstract. And this is one of my favorites, the tent, the sun, and the background, uh, traditional houses. And the sun, how uh, he, it's enormous here because, I mean, I'm, I know now after staying here for seven months how you miss the sun. We, it was something different in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I'm going to move now to Abdel Halim Radawi, who is from the eastern province, sorry, western province again. Abdel Halim Radawi, like most people who lived in Jeddah, at Hajj season, they will all move to Mecca to serve the pilgrim, uh, pilgrimage, either for money or just to serve for free in order to gain blessings from Allah. So he used to witness the people every year coming to Mecca, surrounding the Kaaba, the, all the rituals, and also in the Quran. And we're taught since elementary that the universe goes in circles. So the circle, the thing about it is very huge in, in, in his culture. And again, he's from a sophisticated, uh, uh, very uh, cosmopolitan city. Uh, it's different than Muhammad Salim, where it's a desert. So this is one of his early artwork. Again, I think it was in Italy or, yeah, in Italy. I'm sorry, the dates here are in Hijri. I didn't change them, so. Uh, uh, you can see his artwork here, the circles, figurative art, and the people. Because in Mecca, it, it's like a different city. In Riyadh, if you go, if uh, any one of you have been in Riyadh, you only see concrete. There's no people. People are in their houses or istiraha or cars. But in Mecca or Jidda, it's very active. People are everywhere. That's why you can see humans. And it's, the people there are less uh, criticizing, criticizing artists if they show figurative art. Again, circles dancing, and this is a kind of dance uh, known. These are males with uh, skirts uh, dancing a traditional dance. I think it's uh, from Jeddah, yeah. Again, the circles, there's no uh, uh, horizon here. The movement is very strong. And even the colors, you can see the effect of the sea here, the blueness that he used, the, the shades of blue. You can't see that in Hamad uh, Salim, for an example. Okay. And the doves again. Uh, and, it, and, and because it's a cosmopolitan city, Mecca and Jeddah, people come from everywhere. You can see the details. They're full in his artwork. Not as you can see in Hamad Salim, where it's empty in a way. So again, another way of understanding Islam in Abdul Halim Radawi's artwork. This is one of his recent artwork before he died. Okay, moving to my favorite subjects, women and art. Women were among the pioneers of the contemporary movement of local art. By the participation of Safiya bin Zegir and Munira Mousali in 1968, who received their education outside Saudi Arabia at the time. Professional education was open for boys, as I said, and the only, m only ma male artists were sent by the government to study. But in the case of uh, Safiya and Munira, uh, they were, Safiya was 
had, was from a rich family who could afford to send her to London and Egypt to study. Munira Mousseli worked at Aramco, which is another thing, and she was sent also to study abroad and worked later uh, at Aramco until she re uh, retired. So, uh, after the continuation of the government supporting males while women did not have the same opportunities during the second generation, that resulted in a decline of their role with less participation and the value of women's artwork. The third generation was a revolution as if we were to reimburse re uh, or please after the lack of attention in the past. Large number of women graduate of the professional institutes and universities showed in art exhibitions, sometimes regardless of the level of performance as a negative reaction. Also, I would like to note that women were behind the art scene as owners or managers of art and cultural institutes and organizations. As examples, Al Mansouria Foundation, Safiya Ben Zigur Museum, the Pure Art Institute, and uh, a gallery, Saudi Art Center for the uh, for the Arts, Al Nahda Association, Al Manahil Center. These are w famous institutions owned by women in Saudi Arabia. And most of the private art galleries and the first faculty for art and design is, as I said, for women only. Uh, this. Also, as I said, may be a result of the society's view towards art, as many think that it is more of a woman's field and it will help her be a better housewife. Uh, men using women in art, I'm, I'm gonna show you also how men use women in art and how women uh, express their selves in art. Uh, it's like women are using art to express their demands that Islamic law gave them, but tradition or the tradition way uh, of understanding Islam took it away. So to begin, I'm gonna try to show you the difference between women's art and men's art. This is Nabil al-Bassam, woman dancing. This is uh, from the first generation. Again, Badri and Nasser from the first generation, a kind of woman dancing. Then Samir al Dham, this is Al Arda, the official dance of the Saudi. And uh, Fai al Almai, one of the traditional dances from the South. If you can see the difference, first, men draw men dancing. You would never see, well, until recent, men drawing women dancing. This is like something that they dare not to do. A uh, woman would draw, again, women dancing because we're too isolated communities, women and men. And then see the colors. Uh, these are very bright colors, but the women are sh very black or no, you can't see the same brightness. Uh, men, well, not today, but in, in, in the past, used to go out, but women used to cover going cars. You would rarely see women walk. So you can see its effect on their art also. And last but not least, because they didn't have the same opportunities like men did, the, the, the quality of the art is also different, as again, you can see. But again, this is the first and the second generation. Another example of how men see women. Uh, some, of, some of the men see women as, as symbols, uh, uh, as very important symbol, symbols in the Saudi society. So when they draw men, as an example, Abdul Jabbar al-Yahya sees a woman like a palm tree. A palm tree is, is a very important thing in Saudi culture. It's in the middle of the flag. It, it, it's a, a pride, it's giving uh, because of the date. It's also a very important oil date and Islam, three most important elements in Saudi Arabia. So putting a woman just like a, a palm tree is something giving her the importance that he thinks she deserves. Another interesting artwork by Abdel uh, Jabbar al Yahya is this is how most men see women in Saudi Arabia. He's building and women are giving him the tools that he can build. So he can't build without the woman's support but he's doing the building.
it, it, this covers the whole way how, in my opinion, uh, people think the role of a man and a woman. So I, I do love this painting. Uh, this is uh, Badri and Nasser. I'm going to talk about how women now express themselves. See, women are waiting because the way uh, marriages are done in Saudi Arabia is a man goes and asks the father uh, for his daughter's hand. So women are waiting for the husband. And Badri and Nasser has a ser series of artwork where you can always see women waiting uh, and windows. It's there inside, they're waiting. Today, things are changing. Uh, it's not the issue in many cities, mostly in strict or fundamental families, but not, uh, not, not as it used to be. Again, depression, uh, uh, expression in women's faces, and the man as the king, and the woman is the follower. This is Taghrid al-Baqshi from Al-Ahsa. She sees that the man in our uh, community or society is crowned. Uh, this is also a very interesting artwork by a very young uh, uh, Saudi artist, Iman al uh, She. This is a conceptual artwork. She says, we're different. We're, we look alike, but we're different inside. These are boxes. Inside the boxes are small cards where there are different pictures. So if you want to know more about Saudi women who are covered, just go inside and see how different they are. Some with per perfume and, na and nail polish and stuff, some with books and stuff like that. So we're different. We're not alike. Uh, this is also a very interesting photograph by Madih al Ajrush and how men see women in this society. The banning of uh, women uh, driving is because they are afraid for her sake. So it's our men wolves uh, in, in, in that way. Another thing, uh, Malan al Dwayan says, we want the choice. We want to, to have al uh, the choice. We want to choose everything. And this is something from Sharia which the society took away from us, the choice again for driving, which is a very... And now moving to Shi'at art. Uh, the impact of religion differs in some areas. The city of Qatif, located in the eastern region, is, uh, is a, um, predominantly ruled by the Shi'at doctrine. One can see a movement of an artistic nature and even similarity and unity between the, their artists. Surrealism is the best description for much of the artwork produ produced in the city during the 80s and early 90s. The majority of, of the region's artists have dominated this me method and st some still are practicing oh, okay. Some still are practicing similar styles. But the question proposed are, what are the reasons for such a unity in the region that characterizes Qatif from other Saudi cities? And what are the causes that spread the surrealist theme among the artists of the region? Going back, Wahhabism and its later development marked a new approach for the Shiite in Saudi Arabia. Shiites in the eastern province campaigned for an Islamic state similar to the Iranian model after the revolution in 1979. It became more moderate in the early 90s when it began uh, advocating democracy, human rights, and civil society. It also succeeded in bringing issues of political and individual liberty in Saudi Arabia to the attention of human rights organizations, Western governments, and political parties throughout the world. The late King Fahad decreed in general uh, um, dec decreased, decreed and a general amnesty in 1993, allowing Shias distance who had fled to return to the country. In return, the Shiites were required to abandon their political program uh, or of reform. Then in 2005, King Abdullah gave them more rights, such as art exhibits in Husseiniyat during Ashura. This is thing that didn't have them before, only nine years ago, that they were allowed to have exhibits for Ashura. 
Note that Shia population is 5% of the total population. Uh, this is a 2000, ca uh, 2000 count. And this is not accurate. Shia says it's more than that. So when I asked uh, a, a Sheikh, uh, Hassan al-Saffar, who's the main Shia Sheikh in Qatif, a fatwa on Islam's position with art, he replied, he rep his reply was that it is not against figurative art in two dimensions, only those in three dimensions. And when I asked him about the Dalil, he based his fatwa, he said, knowing I, well, he was knowing that I was a Sunni. Uh, this is not how we work. You just ask and I reply. <laughs> but an interview with one of the first artists from Qatif, uh, whose name is Abdul Ali Sinan, who studied in Iraq, said in the 40s in Qatif, figurative art was haram. And the Sheikh asked him at that time in the 40s when he saw his art work of Karbala Singh to erase details from faces. So this may be one of the effects of the political scene in the area where contemporary artists in Qatif today, as I said, go to Bahrain, to study figurative art. It's halal in their uh, sharia or their law today, but it wasn't in the 40s. This, this is the, the early artwork of Abdul Ali Sinan where you can see there are no details in the faces. And I showed you before the faces uh, of the Shia. It, it's very, and this is Zainab Ali. Well, I think also I tried, I talked and sent emails to artists for them to send me uh, pictures of such uh, artwork, no one replied. But Zainab Ali is a very young artist, she's just a beginner. I think she thought I, I was Shia because of my name. So she replied, sent me her artwork, and this is the only work I got. Well, the Karbola scene over again and again. But uh, a very interesting thing that Zainab said when she replied to my email that she didn't want to copy the Pharisee way of seeing Karbala. She wanted a traditional, a Saudi, Qatifi way to display uh, this scene. And the other thing I was talking about is surrealism, which was uh, occurring during the 80s and 90s. I think it's a, 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 a depression, a pot political depression, that the only way they can show it is by using the surrealism way in art, the same background that surrealism school had in, in, in Europe and the United States back then. Hamida Sina also, so you can see uh, uh, an interview with uh, a critic said, during the 80s and 90s, when you go to an exhibit by Qatifi artist, it's all surrealism artwork. And even later on, some continued to work in the same way, but it was women who did that because they still felt depressed being women, not being Shiat. This is Mahdi Al-Talib, 1999. This is Ghad al Hassan 2009. And the thing is, that kind of art is showed in Saudi Arabia with no problem. But the Husseiniyat or Karbala scenes is showed only in uh, Husseiniyat in Qatif, not, not in other cities like Al Hassa or Medina, which has also uh, Shiites. And another way for people or artists from Qatif is they have these traditional kinds of Shia celebrations or Ashura celebrations. This is not shown in public, but what they would show in public, this is Ali Safar, is this. You can see the relationship with the other kind, but when you see this, you, you, if you're not, uh, if you don't know the previous art, you would not relate it to anything that is Shiat. It's people, uh, and this is even more abstract. Or they would use a symbol like uh, the horse, like uh, Kamal al-Ma'allim, all of his artwork, all of his art artwork is based 
on horses either the whole horse or part of a horse or anything related to a horse and he's a very well-known artist these are sculptures and these are paintings and then you would see modern contemporary artwork which is not related to a specific well this is to uh, uh, Pharisee or early inscript um, uh, illustrations in a way, but this is shown, there's no notion to any Shiat. And this is Madiha al Talib again, but uh, as an example, this artwork won a, a prize from the Ministry of Culture. And this is also uh, her artwork. This is Zaman Jassim. There's no notion to anything Islamic or figurative or anything. It's just contemporary artwork. Yeah, so in conclusion, to conclude, why the effort to work on such subject and how can we change it in Saudi Arabia today? We need to legitimize figurative art. Although it is known in Islamic art, although most artists practice uh, same dis discarding the fatwa, but official authorities don't. So in order to teach art properly, we need to legitimize it. And I'm already working with a specialist in Islamic studies on this uh, subject. Also, we need to show uh, its economical importance to people. This will affect the religious position towards figurative art and eventually the society. Last, this talk is a draft of my work under the Agaham program. Uh, I'm very thankful for that, and your, your uh, uh, feedback uh, will direct me to continue my research this year. I took more than 40 minutes. Do you have any examples of 
women artists who've been empowered by you know, their men, uh, by their fathers, because in European history we have Empowered, you mean? Uh, oh, sort of supported to well, um, specifically for art, uh, if they have practiced. Well, one of the artists I wish I had, I two things. Now I remember I, I should have showed them. Yes, Hamid Selim has a daughter, Najla Selim, which is now a very well known artist. She tried to follow her father's school of art, but in her own style. So, yes, there, there is that direction. And other, like Abdullah Hamas, one of the artists here. But again, we are only four generations, so it's, it's not very clear. Another thing I didn't show, I just remembered, nudism or nude art. There are women who do nude art. I have two examples. One of them studied in New York, went back. When she showed her artwork in Saudi Arabia, it was in the British Embassy, because she's, she can't show that art. Was uh, it male news? No woman. She was dealing with a woman and Islam, using Islam patterns with a nude woman. So this is her case. I have examples of I was going to show it, but I forgot to. Sorry. Uh, the other one is a Saudi who uh, is married now to, uh, to an American who lives here in America, in the United States, and always uses. It, it's her way of showing women issues. What would you say if I change the title of your talk to um, Art in Saudi Arabia? What has politics to do with it? Oh, would it be as like, I said. Because I, I find the word Islam to be too abstract, and um, I didn't see any Islamic mm -hmm. argument really pro or against art. I saw rulers or representatives of religious communities or representatives of traditional communities imposing their opinion on others as to how much they could show, what they can show, and in what context they could show it, and whether women could be encouraged or not. So it seems to me that one would probably be much better off in critiquing what's happening in Saudi Arabia and looking at it from the political perspective rather than from the religious perspective, unless we are able to actually involve people like the Al Sheikh or people like them with fatwas that actually speak directly to artists or react directly to artwork. If it is going to be mediated by politicians or by political uh, decrees by either the king or the princes or whoever else, it seems to me that one has to bring in the political. And you do bring it in actually in some of your remarks here and there, you do bring in the political dimension. Yeah. Well, because this is the way it, it is in Saudi Arabia, political, it's a marriage politics and religion. And this is the way we I don't know how I mean the question mark that was Islam have to do with it. It does imply that what, that it is a political decision, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah and, and again this is what I'm trying to conclude. It's not Islam, it's the way we are looking towards Islam or we are applying Islam in a political way. And you show how it changes over time, even within that region that uh, first something was allowed with the reason. My, what I'd like to ask is, um, we of course, you know, looking at different historical examples can contextualize and say in certain periods that these kinds of views are more prominent in others they are not, and that the two extremes uh, are part of the tradition and it can oscillate between the two. In this case, uh, when they give fatwas or uh, when they legislate uh, what is uh, art or not, I mean, are there um, written texts that define, I mean, what I'm asking is, is it just, like the fatwa you asked and the person here and didn't feel obliged to explain what's the basis of it. Or are there actually written texts that legislate, okay, you, you need to do this, this, and that, based on this hadith and that, for which you can find obviously many contradictions in different hadiths uh, from different schools of uh, thought. How do they do that? Well, uh, as I said, when you ask a fatwa to a Sunni and a Hanbali uh, 
Sheikh, he would list several hadiths and say he concludes it's haram. Mm -hmm. But as a specialist, when I read them, they won't convince me because he, it's different terminology. It's like the word al-musawwirun. Mainly it's based on the word al-musawwirun. When you go to read what is al-musawwirun in Arabic, al-musawwirun is, is, is the people who create. And another thing that is banned in using Saudi Arabia with the word in Arabic, khalq, uh, which they say it's only God who can uh, create. But we have another word for it. So if we can change terminology, maybe this is a way that we can in interpret it, the, these hadiths and change the fatwa. So again, this is a thing I'm ju I just got it approved from an Islamic specialist who said, okay, he was interested. I tried talking to several. No, uh, most of them re refused to cooperate with me. But at last, I found someone who said, yeah, you're, you convinced me, we're going to work up on it. It doesn't mean that we're going to conclude to saying it's halal or haram. It's just that we're going to work on it. Are you, I mean, you're alluding to, I mean, you're persisting. Uh, one of the good frustrations in looking at this produce literature and being able to gain the practice of whatever this world is here, which is really considering, is that you know, there's a persistent absence of a differentiation ontologically between the thing and the thing that's represented. And then also uh, an absence of specific directives of a formal feature. So this is actually the, the formal language of the thing that we really seem to ever be considered. So I, that was that. Um, and and, uh, and this is the thing I'm, I'm also arguing that when you go back, they would say that uh, Figurative art is haram because of the idols. Well, Arabic idols in the past used to be abstract. Why aren't we uh, avoiding abstract uh, sculptures? So these are all questions I'm going to work on. Can I follow also the case of the Some of the women's art suggests that uh, there is a uh, subversive. Dimension behind this. So, are you doing this uh, as a kind of um, statement, or is it your interpretation? You know well, I mean? talking. I mean, if you talk, and also, where are these works shown? Do they be oh, it's, it's a okay. It's it shown everywhere. There's no limitation. This is the thing. It's it's art is an easy way to uh, protest in a way. And women in Saudi Arabia today are more powerful than men, but they have not been given the power. Maybe because they were not been given the power, they, they work on themselves. So when you meet with women, they're much more powerful than men, uh, as an example. And even the work, they, they work uh, more efficient than men do. As an example, for someone would say that if you go to a bank, or any other institute. If you talk to a man, he will finish you more quickly. If you talk to a woman, woman or go to a woman, it will, it will take time. In Saudi Arabia, it, it, it's the opposite. Women will work faster than men. So maybe it's just to prove that. So, and art, as I said, is a way that to express themselves freely. In Um, so the government's aware that the Shia, the Sunnis, I guess the Wahhabis too, right? Is, is Wahhabism a form of Sunnism or is it its own sort of sect? Okay, Wahhabism. We're not allowed to use the term Wahhabi. Right. We used to be allowed, but now it's because of what particularly what happened in Abu Dhabi. Using, using. The, the main uh, thing that Muhammad bin Abd al Wahhab when he came was to go return to uh, to Islam as it was during the Prophet Muhammad. That's why they call themselves right. Salafi. Yeah. So, so they're not separate from 
Yes. No. But Very what well. happened afterwards is, is not what Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab came with. This is a more strict way, a, a political way, and a scholar, again, who refused to give me his artwork, uh, his uh, uh, paper, because it's not published, and he won't publish it now, said this is not Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab's doing, this is uh, his, his ancestors. Doing more so my question, public. I'm sorry, is that um, so the government is aware of the Shia population and that they're producing this art and they're living on Saudi land, and then they're aware that there's also art being produced in Sunni lands, um, and so it's just that they don't want to sanction it through a policy to say that that's allowed. If it's being shown everywhere and it's being produced, not only this, we have lots of other examples. Music, as an example, we are not allowed to teach music in school, although we have a royal land and there is an institute for them to go and learn. But we had a private school who tried to teach music, but they were banned. So this is among several, several, several other issues that have two faces in Saudi Arabia. It's people's choice, religious people's choice, and political choice. So I have a, a personal experience of, uh, there seems to be a lot of Saudi women coming to Boston to study art, fine art, studio art. And um, I'm, I'm the only Muslim on staff, and this one student didn't want to draw nude. And they said, uh, can you, as a Muslim, please advise her? And I said, oh. <laughs> and convince her that it was okay. So I didn't really, I'm not, I mean, I'm Muslim, but I'm not, you know, obviously a theologian. Uh, <laughs> so, so I did come up with something after talking to my father and, and several other people, because uh, I had this pressure to be the point person for Islam at this and I talked to her, uh, she's also hijab, and um, her family moved here with her so she could finish studying. And I said, basically, I um, invoked Niyat. Niyat. I said, you know, if you're looking at that, that new model, are you having salacious thoughts? <laughs> because if you're not, then it's okay. To, because to her, it was this, this sexual relationship to this object which was nude. It's among the main little females. Well, she said we finally got to that she could only draw female nudes. So she couldn't be in a room with a, with a, with a you know, nude male, though her major is fine art. I mean, she's there to, you know, <laughs> to paint. You're going to be the theologian of all married men. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if it's, if it's near, that would Well, I mean, I know. <laughs> it's, it's very problematic, but I felt that it was the only way I could explain that I mean, I had to invoke Islam to explain it. I didn't want to use Western paradigms to absolve her of this. And she, she bought it. Uh, <laughs> because she said, fine, I guess you're right. Uh, it depends, it's really, it's on me to, to understand what my relationship is to this object that someone has pro prohibited from me to look at. So, I, think I don't know, what are your yeah, thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, reply but with another uh, direction. Economics is always empowering or changing the most uh, strongest factor changing people. Because now we have this new sections for women teaching art, new students who want to travel abroad saying, when I come back, where can I work? So fine arts is something new. I'm gonna go and study fine art because when I go back, I'm going to find a job. And because of that, she will change the way that she believes. Another example, uh, a woman who, well, in hospitals, you can see mixed men and women work in mixed uh, society, mixed uh, places. So a woman who is Muna Kaba went to apply for a job in a hospital. And she said, the, 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 the woman who interviewed her, it's uh, a mixed uh, place. She said, no, I can't. But the pay was very high. After three or four days, she came back and said, OK, I will, <laughs> I, I will wear my niqab. It's economics. It will change. Mm -hmm. 
So again, with the art, with the rate of the art, I mean, after the, after the rise of the oil again, Saudi artwork is rising, and who is buying? It's Saudi people who have money. So in order, things will change because of that. Good question. Uh, much, many of the works that you showed were traditional historical fine arts media, so painting and sculpture. And it wasn't very much about a photography or film. It was the one uh, with Abdul Masaj, the Harajin, the Sirat, the film that you had to find. Sirat. Sirat, the Nenek Chan. Okay. So it is there a, a, what was the history of the reaction to photography as a medium that generates images in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. And is there a, a greater practice of photography in video art than what you've shown us today uh, in your presentation? Well, photography is easier uh, because at first, there, now there is a fatwa saying photography is OK. Because you're not doing it, you're just, it's like a mirror. So the mass had a fatwa, so now photography is everywhere. I didn't show it, uh, I, I, I should have maybe, I just showed uh, Manal of Bayan's mm -hmm. artwork, but this is new, this is like the third or fourth generation. Uh, the first thing was painting for the first and mid-second generation, sculpture was only introduced in the end of the second generation because the name Nahd for sculpture is people. We can't even have a department under the name Mac because they would say no. Uh, after that photography it came without people would go just by a Canon, ATD and whatever, everyone is a photographer. And there's a there's a network now we to do it. Video art is not common because Saudi people do not appreciate contemporary art, contemporary uh, ways of moving. They, till today, appreciate the traditional, historical, impressionist, classical way of art. If you show them a video art, they would not recognize it as art. It's a video. So there is, but mostly shown outside of Saudi Arabia. Just a few examples from the 2000 and after it. Um, So what do you what do you think your major project is here? I mean, is a is it kind of a project of recovery? You're writing a history of the practice of the arts in Saudi Arabia in the modern and contemporary period, or do you see your role more as uh, one of the stimulating a discourse and an interest and then being an advocate for making art for its legitimacy? Writing art is very important today. We don't have, as I said before, we don't have an art history department in terms of the artwork. You can see when I show it, I don't have dates. There's uh, there's no uh, there's no museum of uh, modern art. So if we don't write about it, if we don't do historical research, we will lose it. And another thing, I I, I think I. I Several who want to change the way people uh, appreciate and work and deal and practice art. Sorry, I actually feel ignorant about this, but I was wondering whether the, there's no connection between the, the creation of, I mean, or the, the architectural design schools and art. I mean, they, do they not see? Art historical classes, or isn't that included in the education? Uh, uh, architecture is. They do drafting, right? Uh, architecture is taught only to men. Uh, the only I architect uh, was in the eastern province, which was open in Kuba and Hassa or the I'm not sure, for a period for women, and closed, but uh, I think last year was opened again. Uh, we have interior design, but when you go back, it seems like a different 
they, you can't see the connection. I, I don't know why. Uh, even when you talk to architects, here you can see there's, there is a relationship with art, architects and artists and so on. But back in Saudi Arabia, as if this is a different field, a very different field. Hi. Um. I, I was a bit thrown by what you just said because um, when listening to you and you're saying, you know, all of this this art is possible and it's seen everywhere, I, I assumed what you just told us wasn't the case, that there are museums of contemporary art, there are public, there are publics for this art, and there are venues in which this, these publics can view this art, but this is clearly not the case is that right? Okay. And you don't even have, so you don't even have cur cur curation of these artworks, which are then collected by museums, uh, which which then can be a you know source of research as well as public exhibition. Is that, or am I? We're not we're not there yet. We're, the only thing that we have we have art collectors that know that this private. piece of art private art that know who know that. This, this art will value more. Yes, so it's only for the economic sake. We have uh, galleries, private galleries, uh, five or six in Riyadh, maybe 10 or 20 in Jidda, maybe five also in the Eastern province. I don't think we have any uh, any gallery in other cities than these. Uh, they're, they're moving, they're trying. The Ministry of Culture has three um, annually um, uh, huge exhibitions where they gather and uh, buy the art and then uh, use it either for uh, exhibits uh, outside Saudi Arabia, the Ministry of uh, uh, Exterior, or what do you call it? Foreign, foreign, yeah. For, uh, it's also since, I think, 2003 or later, uh, and, uh, uh, also, uh, um, yeah, a competition for Saudi artists every two years where they would gather artwork so it can be shown in embassies outside Saudi Arabia. So it's just uh, institutes, ministries, that know in the museum, and even the artwork. I, mean, I know here in a museum. This is what I'm learning now because I'm studying uh, a class in uh, exhibits and museums uh, where you have to uh, 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 curate. Curate, and uh, each artwork have to document an artwork and stuff like that. We don't have that yet. It's, it's still. Uh, we have a museum at Sophia Ben Zabil. It's her own artwork museum because she's from a wealthy it's family. Private. Yeah, it's a private museum. Nothing. And the foundation, the Mansouria Foundation, at first, they were go aiming to do a, a, a museum, but then uh, they stopped and no news about what happened. Maybe it's politics, maybe, we don't know. We have, I uh, also participated in proposals for museums of modern art to the Ministry of Information, Ministry of Tourism, and to Princess Murray University, but with no replies yet. Can I follow up on that just very quickly? Um, so the King of the Aziz Center for World Culture oh. in Dahran is, is claiming to just to have a museum with actual curation, collection and curation of contemporary art. To be opened in 2012? Something, yeah, yes. inshallah. Inshallah. Well, uh, yeah, and they did uh, also ask for operators and, and from the United States or elsewhere, and they said they will show fine art, but, or fine art will be part of yeah. the museum, but not a museum of fine art, a museum or a center of culture. Yeah. We're, we're hoping it will be a museum, we will see. What's the status of traditional calligraphers? Oh, yeah, this is another thing. I mean, 
we have two directions of philosophy. We have the classical one, where they still study in the mosque in Mecca. And we have the modern calligraphy way, which is also among the fine arts. But it's is, is more. there a dialogue between them? Or between these two different practices? Uh, between fine arts and calligraphy? Well, yeah, this type of fine art paper between the traditional paper. Is there any kind of crossover? I think, yeah, I think practice, because though? people who do classical art sometimes try to do modern. I think they, yeah, but some people who do modern calligraphy do not practice because classical calligraphy, uh, that's why you can see their artwork is very weak comparing to those. Um, are any of the works that you showed or the ones exhibited outside Saudi Arabia in yeah. Western countries? And how, how does that work? I mean, is it only artists that can make it to those places that somehow, you know, get their works inside um, museums or is there okay. um, also other types of more? Uh, I think, well, as, as I said before, it was organized by the list, one of the ministries. Mm -hmm. But again, because of the money, uh, I think Abdel Sachi uh, worked on the uh, Middle Eastern art people in the UK mainly, so that well, the money is in the Gulf uh, area, uh, especially in Dubai, and we should aim to people there. They're uh, collecting art, and they will collect art if they're if it's their own. Uh, so we had two curators or whatever you can call them, who have visited Saudi Arabia several times, met with artists, and began working to uh, show their art elsewhere. One of them, uh, well, his, I know his first name for a second, uh, began uh, a new group called Ed Edge of Arabia, which is now well known. They have shown their artwork uh, in many countries, uh, not in the United States yet but in Europe, in Germany, in the UK, in uh, Art Dubai several times, and uh, in Istanbul, I think, uh, uh, last year, at the end of last year. And uh, the main notion is because that artwork, which was only $1,000, now is $100,000 worth. So he's benching. It's changing yourself. Uh, well, no. All the works you show kind of comply with the rules and the demands mm -hmm. that they somehow obey. Uh, I mean, uh, what What would happen if someone says, "Okay, I I know as much as you do the hadith, and I interpret it differently. I don't consider it haram. That's your interpretation, it's politics, etc." And decide to kind of show. Line it up in front of their house or something. What would be the consequence of that? I mean, have people, um, I mean, you I say that the solution is through a fatwa or through economics. I mean, can't people kind of uh, act in a more Okay, so how can they show it? If it's in an embassy, people have done that. If it's in an exhibition elsewhere, there are two things that you have to do to, to do an exhibition. You have to have authorities. One is from the Ministry of uh, Interior, and the other one is from the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture. They have to say, we allow this part for So, so you do this like you And if you, you cannot do an exhibition without in the pictures of kings and princes being painted in both. Well, as, as I said, the photographs is not These done. are not photographs. You showed us a painting of Yeah, Faisal. a painting. And they would show, and even in, in exhibitions. You would so, show, but not new. I mean, I, I, not I don't, new. I don't think of that. See, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but what I'm saying is that actually, I mean, this is something that, uh, this is a very serious question. Because if you are asking, if you are lending religious authorities the authority to uh, mediate between art and, and public, then they have to answer this question. 
what is their opinion about the fact that all of these princes have had their portraits painted and shown in public? Again, it's the same with the music. Again, it's the same with other and other oh, and so other. The, again, I mean, this, this takes us back to the notion of what's the relationship between religion and politics? In yes. Which I think, you know, calls for a form of pointed criticism or critical studies of what we've presented uh, so far. But there are many, you know, other matters. It, it, it's the same with banks. I mean, I will just give you an example. Mm -hmm. We had banks from, for, for, not centuries, for decades. At the first, everyone put their money in their houses because banks were haram. But because everyone needs to have an account, uh, salaries comes through accounts, things change. And then there were people who were economists, sat with people uh, uh, in Islamic studies, worked together, and then they had a fatwa that they said there is, and we have Islamic uh, banks and traditional banks, and Safiya Islamiyya. Why did they do that? Because they felt the need. We have the banks, people are allowed to go and deal with it, but just for their own notion, we had the Islamic. Uh, so I think it's the same thing with art, music, so with uncovering faces. In schools, uh, children from the fifth uh, grade, elementary school, girls have to cover their faces. My kid, when she, she's in a private school back home, but if she was in a public school, she had to cover her face. But if she goes out with me to the mall, she doesn't cover her face. Do you think it would be possible to, 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 to write about these issues of censorship uh, in, in the sense that you know, the, the ministry is selecting works by artists for exhibition as part of the PR campaign or an embassy to the biennial to the auditors or other venues international. I mean, do you think it might be possible from the selections that they've made um, to, to talk about the formal language that they are promulgating at the expense of other forms of resistance? I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's going to work that way again. As I said, we have we have our time in music with all these pop stars and but and all these videos and films and we are allowed to have cable, but we're not allowed to have cinema. So, I don't know what it is. Her artwork looks like my, 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 my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
know, an Italian painter here on Canada. But, right. but she said, when I talked to her, she said, I have never seen his artwork before. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I can't say to her, you're a liar, but <laughs> you know, I have never seen his artwork before. But what is it by coincidence? <laughs> no, but you do say it's, yeah. I mean, you do make this direct relationship exposure to outside, one way or another, cable, traveling, or, yeah. or maybe just an image on the internet. But we didn't have internet in the 80s and 90s. Right. And just people didn't travel much. If maybe they was they saw someone who was uh, affected by Syrianism, and then they it's like a second-hand source, but it's not direct. Also, I think the she article is really interesting. Thank you very, very much.